Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. Girlfriend of 20 years cheated. She worked at an assisted living facility, decided to take on a part-time gig as an in-home aide for this dude in a wheelchair. He wanted out of the facility, but he needed an aide. She went through the entire hiring process and got him moved into his apartment without ever mentioning anything about it to me. It wasn't until she didn't come home until 3 a.m. and I flipped out about how she had been MIA all day that she finally told me what she was doing. I couldn't believe that it was platonic, so I asked to see her messages to the guy. Everything was deleted. I expressed my suspicions about her infidelity and was told that it isn't like that. A few days later, I asked to look at her phone again, and this time I found a hidden page of apps and opened Snapchat. She had been saving all of her messages going back the past six months. It was bad, like heart-stopping bad. I would go to work overnight, and she would stay up sending him lingerie and private pictures. Also, their chats proved that they had been intimate and in love. This is when she claimed that, It's not like that anymore. I took the fuse for the fuel pump out of my car that she was driving and asked her to leave the home that I had bought for us. Gave her a 60-day notice to get her crap out. She signed over custody of our 12-year-old son and was happy to get only every other weekend visitation. She moved into her mom's house for a while before eventually moving into the dude's apartment. Fast forward to June of this year, 2022, the dude dies. She gets less than two weeks to get moved back into her mom's house and come to find out that she had quit her job at the assisted living facility two months prior, relying on the money she was getting paid to be her boyfriend's in-home aide. So yeah, she's 40 years old, single, unemployed, living with her mommy. Meanwhile, I've since met my best friend, soulmate, and have gotten engaged. Cheaters never win. First response from Scary Inspector 8315. GG Karma and Life. Does she show regret over her choices? The OP replies, Regret like trying to get back with me? In the beginning, before her 60 day notice was up, she was always acting really pitiful and had this woe is me attitude. She never came like groveling back, but in her own way, she made it clear that she thought I was just being mean to punish her and that I would eventually get back with her. She had it all, a house, car, family, a freaking dog for Christ's sake, that she threw all the way so she could have her cake and eat it too. All with a guy that literally had nothing better to do than just sit there and tell her how beautiful she was and how much he loved her. She knows she screwed up a good thing and I'm sure that her bitterness towards me now is the result of that. Scary Inspector 8315 replies again, ha, you are punishing her for her cheating. When you got engaged, she said nothing about it? The OP replies again, Not a word about the engagement, but I've been asking about the possibility of her paying child support without a court order. For whatever reason, she is deathly afraid of going to court. Partly the reason why she agreed with having a stipulated order, just so she wouldn't have to go in front of a judge. And she tentatively agreed that she would pay once she goes back to work. Hence me finding out that she had quit her full-time job. Next reaction from Mize68. I divorced my cheating wife and now I'm living my best life. I have new, great wife, good job, son together. She's basically homeless now, living where she can. Can't find steady employment. She had it good with me and threw it all away. The dude she cheated on me with tossed her to the streets when he was done with her. Next comment from Drunko666. Good for you. My girlfriend of 15 years cheated on me with a homeless drunk cokehead. I paid all her bills and she never worked. And I stopped drinking and using drugs to raise her now 16 year old daughter. I had a brief relapse lost my crap, and ended up in a psych ward. I really wanted to die. Got my crap together and reconnected with an old girlfriend from 25 years ago who had been my closest friend forever before this new relationship. I wouldn't have pulled through without her. We talked and texted every day for months. Then we both realized it was something more. Flew across the country and spent time with her, and it was great. In the process of getting my insurance and medication set for me to move out there for good. Next comment from Jessica Voting ACC. She is a horrible person for throwing away a 20-year relationship and cheating, but I am curious about one thing. You said you're engaged to the new lady you're dating. How come you never got engaged married to the cheating lady in 20 years? Did you have some suspicions before? Next thought from Abel Dress 1678 Wow, am I the only one who had his brain go to an even darker place? She was getting paid by him for an in-home care. She added girlfriend to the mix. Doesn't that technically make an escort? Considering that level of in-home care she was providing, if she kept getting paid after she started sleeping with him. Next comment from Silas B. 69 What country are you in? Laws in the USA are it doesn't matter who cheated. My wife cheated on me over a three year period with several guys while I was paying for her master's degree. We have shared custody with our kid because I make more money. I paid her $500 a month in just child support and she's the cheater. 
luckily had a postnuptial agreement that was signed before divorce, so no alimony and no pension. But damn, it still hurts when I have to write a check to her every month. On to the next story. I'm confused. Me and my now ex-girlfriend started dating in May of 2019. I was a junior and she was a sophomore in high school. A few months down the line, we both thought we were ready to be each other's first, so it happened. We both came from Christian families, so obviously we kept it to ourselves for a long time. That being said, things were going great up until a year into our relationship, my senior year and her junior year, when my parents found out about it. They told me I have two options, either I tell her parents or we break up. I talked to her about it, and we both agreed that I could talk to her dad first, which scared the crap out of me, but I did it anyways and he was understanding. Her mom, however, was the complete opposite. She called her a whore and made her get tested for an STD because her mom thought I was active with my previous ex. We dated for 11 months in middle school and weren't physical at all. So that both of us feel pretty bad about ourselves that she was called a whore for being with one guy, and I technically was too for apparently sleeping with my other ex, which wasn't even close to becoming true. But all that blew by pretty fast, and we stayed together. My parents got over it pretty quickly, but hers always held a grudge on her for what she did with me, and it caused a big strain on her and her parents' relationship, mainly because she still had another year of high school, and I was graduated and moving on to my adult life. Things with her parents never got better between her, and they never seemed to trust me either, and it got to the point where she decided we needed to take a break. October 2020, 15 months into our relationship. I of course tried to tell her that we can work and push through this together, but eventually I came to understand that this was what's best for her if we're to be together in the long run, and I want her to be able to enjoy her senior year, so I knew she was going to be dating other guys. And of course, I'd feel weird about it, but we're not together, so it didn't matter. After she ended things, she assured me and promised me we will be getting back together probably by her 18th birthday, which will be coming that April, so six months. We also weren't allowed to see each other per her parents' rules. That felt like a long freaking time, but I was ready to do anything to make sure we ended up getting back together. She did end up going out with a couple of guys, which again, I did feel weird, but I couldn't do anything about it, and I was happy that she was enjoying her senior year. She felt bad about it at first, and I could tell that she meant it, and she insisted I go out with a couple other girls. I've been working full time since I graduated, and started trade school, so dating wasn't really one of my priorities. And I didn't want to make her feel the same way I did with going out with other people, so I just kept to myself and did my own thing. She made me promise that if I were to find someone else, that I would tell her, and I definitely assured her and had her assure the same thing to me. There was a point in time during those six months, she started hanging out with these new groups of friends, and there was one guy in particular she was hanging out with a little more than usual. I straight up asked her if this is a guy I should be worried about, and she said no. She was honest about the fact that this guy used to like her a few years back before we started dating, but she had me convinced to not worry about anything. A month goes by, and they're still hanging out quite a bit, and I asked her again if there's anything going on, and she said no. She also made a couple of remarks making fun of his appearance, so again, that convinced me that things were okay. Her 18th birthday comes around, still haven't seen each other once since the breakup, and she tells me her parents are going to have us wait until she graduates, beginning of June. So another two months, which I was like, all right, whatever, I did six, I can do another two. Prom comes around, and they're still getting pretty close, and I have a feeling that he would be someone to ask her to this dance, and I asked her if this is a possibility, and she says, no chance that happens. And sure enough, it happened. I could see it a mile away, and she seemed too oblivious, and this was when I started feeling like she was lying to me and starting to cover something up. She assured me and promised me they were going as friends, and that me and her were going to be getting back together soon, so that's what I was holding on to at this point. But my gut and my own family was telling me she's going to break my heart. But in my mind, I was too focused on what I thought was going to happen instead of what was happening at the moment. I still couldn't find the urge to go on dates with other people just because I wasn't that type of you did this so I'm going to get back at you type of guy. I still respected that she was in high school and she could do what she wanted to do. Graduation comes along and for some reason we still can't get together. She just says a little while longer. She didn't hang out with him as much after prom from when she graduated, so I thought all that was over. July comes around and her parents finally let us go out on a date, so I just took her to a nice little dinner to catch up, not to get back together or anything. Her vibe was a little different. It wasn't the, we picked right back up where we left off type of thing, but I just thought she had to warm up to me a bit again. We both had talks about becoming active again when we get back together, and her parents found out because they go through her phone like none other, so that was a major setback for us, but we still were willing to wait however long it needed to take, and she again promised me it will happen, and that I'm the guy she wants to spend the rest of her life with, and that meant a lot to me. 
From the day that we started talking and dating to the point that she said that last thing to me, we've talked every day, whether it's been through text or through FaceTime. We've always been in constant contact with each other. She did what she was supposed to do, which was date other people and enjoy her senior year, which I believe she did. I did what I was supposed to do. I did what I wanted to do. And that was to focus on my job and school and not worry about dating other people because I thought that would be what's best for me and our relationship in the future. I wanted to move up in my job, which I did very quickly, so I could be ready for the next step in our relationship whenever she felt like she was ready for it. And I was very confident that I was doing the right thing. Well, sure enough, on August 29th at 11.33 p.m., I decided to look at her VSCO because I do so every often because I like to see the cute picture that she posts on her most recent post on August 17th. So about two weeks prior was a picture of her and another dude with the caption saying, Miss him. And my heart just sank. And I've never cried like I did that night. I couldn't make out who the picture was at first. I thought it was someone else because it didn't look like that one guy. I tried to call her, but it seemed like she fell asleep for the night. I sent her a series of texts just saying everything that's going through my mind like, you promised to tell me if this would happen, and ten and a half months of my life I spent waiting for you down the drain, and all that fun stuff. And this isn't even the ending. <laughs> I called in sick to work the next morning because I didn't get any sleep, and she texts me the following morning and just says the good old, I'm so sorry, I was going to tell you, and all that BS. I asked her who it was and she wouldn't tell me, and that made me even more furious. I asked her why she did it and her answer was just, it was easier. So all I said, I can't believe you dropped two and a half years of emotional and memorable memories for something that was easier, and I just wanted to know what I did wrong, and she said nothing. So I just said, F it, and called it. I contacted her later, asked her if they were still together, and she said no. So I was like, alright. I then later found out it was that guy she told me not to worry about from another post on her VSCO that I saw of him, and I couldn't believe it. I texted her and I went by a couple weeks later to get some personal items and got emotional when I saw her because this is the girl I loved who threw me away for someone else, you know? She said they're not together anymore and I asked her if she would ever want to go out again sometime. Just let me know and she said for sure. I felt like a complete idiot asking that because I found out later they never broke up and she just kept lying to me and everything just made sense to me that she was a liar. Broke her promises just to save her butt from the grief of coming to me and saying she found someone else that could have saved me a lot of time. Am I crazy or do I have the right for feeling the way I did? The thing that I was most upset for was just her making me promise to tell her if I found someone else during our break multiple times. And yet that hypocrite did the same exact thing. It's been almost 7 months and I still can't get over it. They're still dating and I'm having a hard time dating. It feels like I'm the one who still lost this. Just needs some second opinions. Our first response comes from Pateruzu12. To all you guys out there, the we are just friends, it's time to reconsider if the relationship is worth it. When your significant other is expending more time with coworkers, others, friends, but you, take a look on yourself and see how far you're going to lose to save something that may be out of your control. We can't control what others do. I'm talking normal people. If you invest in yourself, you can't go wrong. Time to move on with life. Experience is always welcome. Safe and happy journey. Next comment from Wheels Are Spinning. This is a case where she was just not that into you. You're a good friend type. Her parents probably pushed you out on her, say, cause she has confrontation issues. Continue trade school, refocus on work. Also work on bettering yourself. Hit the gym, pick up some good hobbies, build your self esteem back up. Were the trades always going to be your path? If so, why didn't you go to a vocational high school? You could have gone to a union hall fresh out of high school and applied. Once you get in your continued education is free. By the time your old friends get out of college, thousands to 100,000 in debt, you would be one year from a license and banking a fourth year rate. You'd be close to making 100k a year, especially with all that it's available. Next comment from No Idea 19. The end of a young man's first love always hurts, but you are young. It may not seem like it, but believe me, you are. You have your whole life in front of you. In your life, you will meet many young women. Date and enjoy your time with all of them. Think of it as an audition or job interview. In a way, isn't that what dating is? The more you date, the more you will come to find the type of woman you want to marry. Don't get so wrapped up in another so quickly. There will be women that you think are the one, and they don't feel the same way. There will be women that feel that way about you, but you don't feel the same way. There will be heartache along the way. Only through experience will you be able to determine who that special someone is when you finally meet her. In the meantime, enjoy your youth and your life. Good luck. On to the next story. 
always trust your instincts. So back in 2020, I matched with my ex on Tinder. We just had this long conversation and everything just felt right. We quickly begin getting to know each other better. About two months in, my friend sends a screenshot of him still using Tinder. I thought the feelings between us were mutual and that we were exclusively seeing each other and that I was enough for him. When I confronted him, he stalled a bit and then admitted that he wasn't ready to only see one person. I decided I was okay with it because I didn't want to lose him, but then quickly changed my mind because I was always the rebound in between girl. The one guys just use and then discard when and perfect enters their life, I guess. I told him I no longer wanted to feel that way and that I wanted to discontinue things and he decides then to exclusively see me. After that, we were exclusively seeing each other, but he wouldn't delete his Tinder account, although he swore he never used it during then. We were off and on because of my trust issues and constantly feeling like he wasn't that into me. He also kept giving me excuses that while he really liked me, saw a future, etc., that he wasn't ready to be in a relationship because he wanted to finish school first and start his career. Again, I didn't want to lose him, so I figured he's trying, and we're exclusive, just not with the titles, so that's good enough for now. We still go through our ups and downs because I lacked trust in him. I guess intuitively, I knew he wasn't all in, and it made me feel like I just wasn't good enough. Then, an incident happens where I'm accused of cheating, although we weren't together, and he kept coming up with every single excuse in the book as to why I couldn't be his girlfriend. We get back together. Valentine's Day comes around, and I saw on social media that he wasn't all that excited about spending it with me. I have somewhat of a breakdown and threaten to go home, but he reassures me that he's excited about me, etc. We have an amazing day together and night. I posted up our photos and yet, shocker, he doesn't post up anything with me. I feel embarrassed and insecure, so I take them down and ask him why he didn't post us. He says he would rather post us in his own time. The relationship continues for a few more months until one night we get into a really bad argument. I felt like he wasn't that into me and kept showing me that and he breaks up with me for not trusting him. A few months go by again and he insists that I block him because he'll just keep contacting me and what's not. So I do, but he keeps finding other avenues to contact me. One night over the summer, he comes by to see me. We sleep together and he assures me that he still loves me. A couple days later, he asked me to be official with him only to take it back. I am heartbroken and try to move on for good. Then, a few days afterwards, he asked me again because he finally started his career, etc. I'm so happy and we become official, but the trust issues are still there. Little did I know, about a month in, he hits up another girl with the intention to cheat on me because he decides he's not really in love with me and is just lonely and trying to fill a void. He's tired of my lack of trust and we had an argument prior about it. He tells me he might as well cheat and that he deserves better than me and is insecure for putting up with someone like me. I feel horrible, so I try to trust him and do better as a girlfriend. But the whole time he falls in love with the girl he hits up. Mind you, we're losing distance at this point, but so is he with this girl. We're both in the same city. He comes back and surprises me for my birthday and takes me out on a date. That night something really bad happens and he tells me that he realized he wanted to marry me and protect me. After this, however, he goes on dates with the other girl, sleeps with her, is actually in love with her. One day I saw that she liked to post talking about him wanting his girlfriend. I found it suspicious and brought it up to him. He threatens to leave because I'm not trusting him and I'm crazy and basically stalking a girl he doesn't even know. He then comes back and tells me he understands why I reacted the way I did because it happened before. We get back together. But then deep down in my gut, I felt something was off. A few weeks later I realized I was right. I confronted the girl who didn't know about me and confirmed that they had been talking to each other while he was away on business and started dating when he came back. I confronted him and he completely ghosts me and tells the girl he's actually in love with her. He then confirms that it was never truly love with me. He confirmed my worst and biggest fears since meeting him, that he wasn't really into me, that he was just using me to pass the time, that I was just sex and attention, that he met this girl and fell in love. Then he changed the story to he did love me, clearly trying to make himself feel better, but he just cheated and ruined things between us and then decides that he wants to become friends with me, but only to ease the guilt. He follows me again on social media, and I had to see them be affectionate and loving towards each other, even after the BS that transpired. I realized I had had enough, and that I just deserved to at least get away from the madness. So I do myself a solid and block them everywhere. The end. He then reaches out to me days later to tell me that he found out she cheated off a burner account, and if we could follow each other again. I tell him no, to basically go to hell and block him. They get back together, learn this girl is a toxic manipulating B, so of course they did. Also I'm surprised at how pathetic my ex actually is. Also found out that the girl has a history of getting in between couples, that she told him if she knew about me she would have lied and continued seeing him. And now they're two months going strong, and I'm 
I guess, broken? I don't know. Anyways, my cheating story. Hopefully you learn from my mistakes and to not overlook red flags in a person no matter what they say. It's always in the actions. Always trust your instincts. Even though it sucks that this thing happened to me, I realize they truly deserve to be with each other, and now I get the chance to experience real love, I guess. Edit. It seems like some people read this and assumed that we just dated unofficially and that he met someone else. So just to clarify, we did eventually become boyfriend and girlfriend. There were times where he would tell me how lucky he was to be with me and glad that I was his girlfriend. He would be upset at me for not initiating the I love you to him. He was very convincing and manipulative, which made me question what it was that I kept feeling. He also admitted to emotionally abusing me and even after this thing happened, stalked me on social media and messaged me off a burner account. Yeah, I let a lot of red flags slide because I really thought it was me having trust issues, but I was also being manipulated and lied to. I was being cheated on while having this seemingly amazing guy that even my friends and family thought was amazing. He had everyone fooled. As for the girl, I'm just not attacking her character because I'm bitter. I actually got to know her. She loves going out of her way to hurt people and manipulate. There are a lot of things that I didn't include in this story time, including the times that I left. I may have been desperate in the beginning, but he would do anything in his power to keep me, and that's what a lot of people don't understand happened. Even during his cheating before I found out, I left, and yet he still kept begging me to come back despite having this girl as his side chick. First reaction from HoneyNJ2000 OP, I'm going to be brutally honest. All I could see as I read your post was the word desperate in big red letters, just blinking over and over and over. This whole crap show will have meant nothing unless you've truly learned from it. And hopefully what you've learned from it is to never, ever disrespect yourself in order to desperately hang on to anyone. And that's what you kept doing, disrespecting yourself in order to cling to this piece of crap. Next time, respect yourself more and never give more than you're getting. Next response from Rare Decision 117. Girl, it sounds like you knew from the beginning that he wasn't right. I'm assuming you're young and maybe you don't have a whole lot of dating experience, but you need to understand your worth, girl. Anyone who tries to make you feel anything other than loved and safe doesn't deserve your time. No one should make you feel less than. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. I'm sorry this experience happened to you, but you can at least use it as a learning experience. If any dude even remotely treats you in a similar way to this in the future, run. Next thought from Drunk O666. Don't let anyone walk on you in the future. Cheaters are selfish scum. Find someone who cares about you that you can trust. And if you don't trust someone, don't continue to take them back. All they will do is continue to hurt you. Our final comment comes from Lunar Pisces. I've been through something similar and you know what? I'm thankful because now I'm a one and done type of person. Disrespect me, cheat on me once and I'm gone. He honestly sounds like such a piece of crap. I'm happy you're done so you can finally heal.